In today's video we will be looking at social media automation, specifically front-end interactions. Things such as auto-commenting, auto-likes, auto-subscribes and so on. It's one of those topics where there continue to be products being promoted and sold and at the same time social media platform restrictions create a lot of conflicting views. What can you do without getting your channel banned? So if you're like me and wonder what all these things are about and wonder whether there's some way that it can help you in your online business, please stay on and watch the video. Hi, I'm Jenny Brew from Nomadic Hero. This channel is about providing information to help you in setting up an online business. If you need some help without the bullshit, then see the link in the description below this video. There's lots of free training that you may find valuable. And last, if you have been to this channel before, please subscribe, ring the bell for future updates and give me a thumbs up. Okay, let's get started with this video. So we'll start by looking at the automatic process in general and it makes sense to, to look at uh, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook separately and just look at some of the perhaps differences in, uh, in each of those platforms and, and how this works. Uh, and then we'll take a look at some of the uh, negative aspects of actually using this automation so what is automation? We, we use this terminology and it's sometimes confusing but in this context for this video we're talking about using third-party software to manage your account, carry out tasks, interact with users without a human being present. Now with automation you can look at it in two ways. One is the front end part which is the services that actually take control of your front-facing interactions with your users such as auto commenting, auto follow, auto subscribe, auto like, auto watch, auto engage of some kind and you can see these are in fact the very sort of front-facing type interactions and these are the ones that there are of concern to the platforms the second type of uh, automation is the back-end automation which really consists of management tools that automate behind the scenes and we're talking about publishing, reporting, analytics, this sort of thing you know and, and publishing or scheduling your posts and so forth. That is not the subject of this video because those particular parts of the automation are good. They're uh, an aspect that just helps you in your business and helps to uh, be a lot more efficient in, in managing your process. So let's, let's sort of dig in further on the front end and we'll see what this actually means in relation to different platforms. These are the Instagram community guidelines and what is relevant here is the short we want Instagram to continue to be an authentic and safe place for inspiration and expression. So that gives you the high, high level requirement. And if we, uh, we're focusing here on um, automation and bot bots and uh, spam basically. And as far as the community guidelines are concerned, it comes in here, foster meaningful and genuine interactions. Help us stay spam free by not artificially collecting likes, followers or shares and posting repetitive comments or content or repeatedly contacting people for commercial purposes without their consent. And that is the real key to um, what is, it, wrong about automatic commenting, automatic likes, automatic follows and so forth with Instagram. A lot of this stuff uh, that is automated uh, are seen as bots and uh, you know bots are not encouraged particularly when they, they increase the amount of spam. 
So Instagram doesn't like inauthentic activity and you'll find that uh, Instagram will shut down automation tools and bots that violate their best practices. The auto likes and auto comments are the ones that are most likely to get reported and blocked because this will particularly the comments will be seen as spam now the trouble with the ones that with spam is automatic comments can sometimes be totally inappropriate because they can't second guess all the situations under which certain comments are made so you can in fact get ones that can create uh, rather big problems also uh, auto direct messages can also be considered spammy because there's absolutely no relationship with the person that that direct message is being sent to and they are a problem as well uh, auto follows particularly in instagram um, you can follow a lot of people um, and theoretically some of them or most of them may follow you back this has led to uh, sort of spammy practices as well so Instagram have reacted in that situation to try to reduce spam by having a uh, limit uh, of 7,500 follows. And this was only introduced in the last couple of years so if people had more than that at that time I think they maintained those. Now what can be said here is you can use what they call organised replies and an organized reply is really just a little library that can be set up with responses to common comments that are made and you'd need to do an analysis of the comments that come through on your Instagram account. These are kept in a little library and when you get them they can in fact be manually sort of pulled out but it does save a lot of time. So the positives of using automated comments, pros saves time. Uh, you can grow your followers much faster and the real problem is they may not be targeted and they may not even be engaged but you may have a, a lot of followers. Um, it also allows a greater study of audience preferences so because you have a much larger qu quantity of data to be looking at. Opposed to that, there's quite a large number of cons. Instagram does prefer users to engage authentically and to grow organically and imposes limits and penalties for spammy practices as we've seen. And bots are usually obvious and they are disliked. People really, really don't, don't like them. And, you know, some of the obvious faux pas that occur with, with bots with strange responses or just quite mad responses to some comments are, are problematic. You will miss out on the personal interactions you could be having with your customers or clients and they will not be engaged and there will be no relationship because there's been absolutely no um, no personal uh, interaction at all. Um, you are open to complaints and at some stage this will probably be reported for spamming. Once spamming has been reported accounts can be flagged and then ultimately banned and also these automatic uh, processes are not necessarily certified by various platforms. This goes more broadly than um, Instagram as well. Moving to YouTube now again community guidelines are here and there are rules about spam and deceptive practices and also fake engagement. Fake engagement, but it says um, it's all about protection of the community. Um, YouTube doesn't allow anything that artificially increases the number of views, likes, comments or other metrics either through the use of automatic systems or by serving up videos to unsuspecting viewers. So the same deal, you can see that um, anything that's automated is frowned on and uh, you know, and it is regarded as artificial and not authentic. Content and channels that don't follow this policy may be terminated and removed from YouTube. Video spam 
and you get more of the same sorts of things excessive posting repetitive or untargeted and does more than one of these other things clicks views or traffic off YouTube by promising reviewers they'll make money fast uh, misleading information uh, scams offering cash gifts and so forth pyramid structure incentivization spam content that sells engagement metrics such as views likes comments or any other metric on YouTube and this includes the notorious sub for sub contents that you probably have all seen before and repetitive comments YouTube has covered off on all this as well so expect the same sorts of treatment that accounts can necessarily be banned by using these automated comment processes in our YouTube example we'll look for software that searches for channels and automatically posts comments based on keyword research now we're on YouTube and we're searching for auto commenting to see what is out there in the public arena we end up with auto comment on Facebook by using Python script uh, auto comment on YouTube using Sosinator now this um, piece of software Sosinator you'll find is uh, applicable to a number of different social media channels it does seem to work across most of them and um, there are some videos in here showing you how to use it and it certainly does exactly what it says that's auto commenting it does auto likes auto follows etc etc but um, it does have a lot of limits in terms of how many you can do per hour per day I'm trying to make the software act in a way that seems the way a human would act okay so here's Twitter using Sosinator now this one Javi is also a equivalent sort of software and there is a tutorial on this one I'm not recommending you to actually use Javi but uh, it's it's interesting in terms of the controls that they are putting in the back end to try and make this look like a human is acting and make it look natural so it will actually have a piece a random sleep piece in there where no action will take place it'll limit you to so many actions per day it will uh, limit you to the number of comments that you can make it looks for comments based on keywords but the keywords in fact can be used um, in different ways and they also use Spintax now Spintax is the way in which you can find synonyms for or equivalent words for a particular keyword so it sounds different but it's the same if you get what I mean so what Spintax is it'll spin just words and give you equivalent words or phrases or sentences or whatever this is the way in which article spinning works I have done a video on article spinning and I will leave the link in the description below so do have a look at that if you're interested the thing about the keywords is um, try to make this look as natural as possible is you can actually specify the duration of the video that you can look at only videos that have been uploaded in the last week and you can specify the niche and the date and obviously keep changing your spin tax to to make this thing work and so on so what you'll see going through here is Instagram uh, auto comment bot uh, LinkedIn and here's another one auto comment on post on Instagram using Sosinator so there's there's a lot of them I'm not recommending you do any of these with the exception of perhaps educating yourself now you can auto reply to a number of situations and it's suggested that there are a situation for general inquiries and this is where you'd get a lot of similar questions regarding perhaps price availability or discounts and it's quite easy to respond to these things with an auto reply because there will be repetitive keywords coming through there in a situation where you might have a personalized customer service or perhaps negative complaints or comments then these issues which are more specific are probably best dealt with by private and direct feedback 
because it's a situation where you really wouldn't want to share the information around. You may have potential customers showing interest and you can offer a discount or a promo code directly to that customer without sharing in the general Facebook community. Now, they are specific situations for setting up your auto replies. What you need to know is that Facebook requires a third party service to set up auto replies for comments on Facebook posts and ad posts. Now it's it's useful to use this auto reply because what it can do for you is it, it can allow you to respond to those comments in a very timely way, very quickly, and you can appear to be quite responsive to customers' needs. And also, you can set up multiple types of auto replies for different feedbacks. And what this allows you to do is to take control of the whole engagement piece in Facebook. These are the Facebook community standards. And if we click to integrity and authenticity, we can see that um, authenticity is the cornerstone of our community. We believe people are more accountable for their statements and actions when they use their authentic identities. And then we have a whole piece on spam. Now, this captures the same thoughts that we've seen before on the other platforms. Do not post, share, engage with content or create accounts either manually at very high frequencies i.e. this is the domain of, of bots who, that can that are capable of autoresponding very very quickly and this is not the way in which humans would interact so this key indicators that there's a bot in action um, require or claim that users are required to engage with content i.e. like share before they can view or interact with that particular content and go encourage likes, shares, follows, clicks, use of apps under false pretenses and so forth and they don't like cloaking either which a lot of people tend to do. So that's useful to refer to in, in terms of Facebook. So just to summarise the negatives from using this automatic commenting, subscribing etc etc there are more negatives than there are positives and the main problem is it's not authentic engagement and the large numbers that you can generate as subscribers or likes or whatever there is absolutely no engagement attached no relationship with the user or customer and basically you miss out on those personal interactions with your customers that actually builds uh, loyal followers, loyal subscribers. Also, you leave yourself open to complaints or alternatively you can be reported for spamming. Uh, accounts can be flagged and then ultimately banned. They go against all community guidelines for each of the different platforms and they're not certified in some, a lot of cases by those platforms. There is a middle ground in this though and we did look briefly at automated replies and if they have well thought out triggers they can really help in this situation and if the automatic replies can improve response time and automate answering generic questions and generic questions being answered automatically can save you time. And that leaves you with that available time to be able to respond to those more complicated cases that you need to address. So there is a place, um, but you need to be very, very careful about using automated uh, comments. Uh, and you will obviously be using them through a third party and generating well thought through automated replies. Well, I hope you found some value in this video. Uh, if you haven't been to this channel before, please uh, subscribe, ring the bell for future updates and give me a thumbs up. Now, if you're serious about setting up an online business and you find you need some help, then if you have a look in the link in the description below, you'll find some good free training that um, may help you on your online journey. Thank you for watching this video today and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.